Another defensive breakdown led to this goal by Godfrey Ingram with five minutes left in the first half. With a score three to one, Crescitelli hits the crossbar, but Ingram is there for the rebound. Four to one quakes, and that's how it ended. Crescitelli in Dangerfield would score. It's four nothing, and Vim Subir gets it to Godfrey Ingram, and he's looking for Gary Etherington. Great pass by Ingram. Etherington onside right there with the right foot. The quakes take a five nil lead. Three minutes following that one. The shutout continues at least to this point as Vince Hill. Godfrey Ingram working the ball on Montreal's Brian DeClaire. And DeClaire will chop him down in the box and a penalty kick called by referee Philip Clark. Ingram takes it himself in front of the crowd of 12,000 plus. 66 minutes into the game, San Jose has a 2 0 lead. And they're looking to come back from that loss against the Caps and maintain control at the top of the Western Division. Just two minutes after the play comes the length of the field. Back pass to Mike Hewitt, the Quakes keeper. Long goal kick out of his area. Misplayed here by the defense. It comes to Dangerfield, who flicks a great through pass to Godfrey Ingram with a right foot. And it's 3-1 San Jose. Ingram's eighth goal. Beautiful pass by Dangerfield to make it. And it started all with the keeper, Hewitt, with the goal kick. I was reading some, uh, some, some booklets, and they were saying, Definite, definitely out of the playoffs, San Jose and so and so, you know, it's, it's ridiculous, you know, because the, the standard um, and the players change around so quickly in the NASL that you can't write any team off. McAllister to danger field, and it comes over to Godfrey Ingram on the service, and a good header past Gross, his 10th of the year. Ingram gives his team a 1 0 lead. Eight minutes after that, Ingram does his thing down the left side, looking for Tony Crescitelli in the center. Play on, says the official. Crescitelli puts it through his seventh of the year, beating Gross, and it's 2-0. San Diego would come. Not much room over there, as you can see, uh, for Chico Hamilton, but he's got a good left foot. Let's see if he swerves this one in. Gary wide left over here behind Durgan. Hot toward the head of the box, and a header and a save, and a follow and a goal. Only 100 yards long, Mike Hewitt, the goalie, picks up an assist as the Aaron header comes right down to Godfrey Ingram beating Birkenmeyer, and it is 3-1 San Jose on top. The Cosmos on their western road trip. This is the first stop, but right now they are worried, but they do get back into the game and score another tally. Stingler on the road taking on the Quakes, and that was the game in which Godfrey Ingram tied a club record for goals. Let's join this action as San Jose took an early lead. Ingram again, that man on the ball. Allaire with it now. Bottom of the circle. Long drive up field. Ingram on the run. Hahn tracing the cover. Ingram is in the box. A shot and a score by Godfrey Ingram. His 15th goal of the year in San Jose. leads it one to nothing. The defense on the Chicago thing sleeping. Hilaire hits a tremendous pass to Godfrey Ingram. He beats the Chicago defense. Paul Hahn tries to take him down outside of the box, but let the player get into the box. And there's a shot right under Dieter Ferner. The fleet, Godfrey Ingram for San Jose, their leading goal scorer. A minute 15 to play in the first half. 2 nothing. Golden Bay. Here's the ball to Godfrey Ingram. Nice change. Oh! Tremendous goal by Godfrey Ingram. Seamus, what a great goal. Tremendous finish by Ingram. Man. Great ability in this young player, both to take the pace off the ball and it's hit to him hard to get away from his defender and fire. But again, woeful luck. Look at all this free space here. Look at all this time. This player has all the time in the world to put in a perfect pass. Look at how well he takes the pace off the ball. One step and nowhere else to put him in the corner, and that's where he puts it. Superb finishing by Ingram. What a great finish. Oh, Absolutely. Super genius. finishing by Godfrey Ingram, who used to, we hate to remind you, but used to be Cosmo's property. Well, Seamus, if you think about the quicks, I'll head down, Bob, you hold them. Look forward to your comments and interviews down there. This will be an easy goal for the Earthquakes. Godfrey Ingram easily there. After the cross came across, it looked like the man who knocked it down for him was either number 21, Clavio, or else Steve Jungle was there, and Golden Bay comes back with a goal very quickly. I was one step out of the booth, Bob. I'll jump it back and put the headset to Jungle as he is crossing, and it slides in at the corner there. Easy goal for Godfrey Ingram and as you can see Godfrey Ingram this year 
Hess. That's his eighth goal to go with eight assists for 24 points. Steve Jung. Golden Bay down the left wing. Maybe they're going to make liars out of all of us. There's a goal. Just like the first one, it was crossed across, and Godfrey Ingram, completely unmarked, puts Golden Bay up by a 2-1 score. They went back to the basics. They got wide on the left side. Godfrey Ingram warning the ball. You can see him holding up his hands, and boy, is he open. Nobody there for the Roughnecks as he puts it in easily to make it 2-1. And just two minutes later, Ingram finds the net for his 10th goal of the season. The Quakes had their chances to tie in this game several times in the second half. Before he flew away, the Quakes played a great first half, very aggressive at the 24-30 mark, a three-on-two break. Jan Goosens back to Godfrey Ingram. And Ingram, the shot and goal past Victor Nagura for Ingram, his 11th of the year, and it was 1-0 Quakes. And just and two minutes into the extra period, Jim McAllister making his first appearance of the season. The great pass to Godfrey Ingram, who finishes off the winning goal. The Quakes over the Sting 3-2 in overtime for Golden Bay. A perfect at-home record of 11-0, 16-8 overall. Congratulations. Later, the Quakes got it back. Jermaine Iglesias intercepts right here. The assist to Godfrey Ingram and the left-footed boot into the net. For Ingram, his 13th goal of the season, 10th in nine games, and we were tied at one. The strikers came back to strike again. Ray Hudson Quakes, the assist from Jungle onto Turlucky, and the goal coming up by Godfrey Ingram, his 14th of the season. Godfrey with the goal, Jungle the assist. They both have 39 points, and they both break George Best's point total of 38, the record set in 1981. 4-2 Quakes, the final, their 13th win in a row at home to tie an NASL record. It's also a nine-point win for Golden Bay. They are definitely in the playoffs for the first time since 1977. The Quakes still have a shot at the Western Division title. They trail Vancouver by 15 points, and congratulations tonight. What a great win. Two minutes and 30 seconds to go in the game. Terlecki got the assist. Ingram the goal. The place went wild. 3-0 final. Quakes will host Chicago a week from tonight. 8 o'clock, Spartan Stadium. Second game will be in Chicago, September 9th at Chicago. Third game, if necessary, back here September 14th in Spartan Stadium. Now the Second overtime period, the former Quake, Godfrey Ingram, beating his teammates a rifle shot. The first goal of the year for Ingram, the final 3-2 Minnesota. The Quake's three-game home streak is over thanks to Ingram. Much went. We'll get the assists on the go. Right though, here's a stolen ball, pass ahead to Ingram, breaks it on the list, and shoots, goal! Ingram, the 12-yard spot, hit the crossbar, and bounced down under the goalkeeper, who had committed too early, lift the line, and left it in unprotected. Unbelievable. Four zip in favor of Minnesota. out to be the game-winning goal. Flurry in front of the net. Godfrey Ingram heads it in, and that made it 4-3 the final. To Polsky, to Godfrey Ingram, who scored twice, a little fake, and Bob Bob goalie. It's 5-3 spurt. Freddie Gerger. It was comfortable with each other now, and uh, we're producing our best sort of soccer now. I think I don't think we've produced our, our limit, but uh, right now we're producing really good soccer. Came to America. He thought he was here for, well, maybe a six month past, nothing more. But come to find out some four years later, Godfrey Ingram is making a career in America. I really couldn't see myself uh, staying in America when I first came to the country because, uh, you know, I come from a big family and uh, I thought it was going to be really tough being away from them for any length of time. Uh, I thought America was going to be all skyscrapers and Dallas and, uh, you know, Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> And uh, the first time I came over was uh, to New York, and it turned out to be just that. Uh, the second time I came to San Jose, ex expecting all these great big skyscrapers, and I found a very nice uh, family-oriented community. Soccer is not the only thing in Godfrey's life. I like to do a lot of boating. Um, we bought a boat around about two years ago. I think it was the best thing we did. And uh, we spent nearly every summer, um, you know, learning about boating and enjoying enjoying the water. I love being on the water. Um, that's really my first love. I really would like to do that and I'd like to um, get into some kind of chartering business with uh, sailboats. We're, we're planning at the moment to uh, try to add to our um, Dali collection. Um, at the moment we've got one called uh, the Village de Paranoia. 
In San Jose in Las Vegas, we work with underprivileged kids, uh, kids who've been in the juvenile court and stuff. And um, you know, we put on a camp film, a free camp, and uh, you know, a day out picnic and stuff like that. The Ingram family has another famous member, his brother Graham. Graham, uh, my brother, just signed a, a recording contract with EMI. Uh, he plays bass guitar, and uh, they were recently in Manhattan recording some stuff. How do you compare yourself, Godfrey, to your brother as a musician? Sorry. I was a lot better. I was, <laughs> I was really talented at, at guitar. And uh, <clears throat> Graham came along. I had a bass guitar, and uh, one Christmas I couldn't make my mind up what to, uh, to buy my brother. And I was getting sick of this bass guitar, so I wrapped it up <laughs> in some cheap paper, and I, I put a card on, and I said, that's your, birth, your uh, Christmas present. Ingram's feelings when he gets on the floor are unique. Whenever I go out on the field, I, I always make a point of looking up into the stands and uh, whether there's five, five people in the stands or if there's 50,000 people in the stands. I try and pick out a couple of individuals and I, I say to myself, well, you know, these people pay good money and I really want to entertain them. I see soccer as being an entertainment sport. We have to go out and entertain and my style is geared to that. I like to sometimes do flashy things, sometimes I overdo it a little bit. You know, outdoor is still really my favorite, but I realize now that my career is going to be completely indoor. And I, I'm quite happy with that. Steal by Godfrey Ingram. Now watch this. Is this cruel? Huh? Oh, yeah, you got to love it. <laughs> and, and then Paul Child becomes soccer star. Godfrey Ingram is your basic professional soccer player in America. He hails from England. He's bounced around both the indoor and outdoor leagues, stops in San Jose, Las Vegas, and the Spirit acquired his services in late September to bolster their frontline attack. At 25, Godfrey Ingram is well on his way to making his niche in the world of pro sports. But the thing is, Godfrey may not be the best known of the Ingram family. You see, Godfrey has a brother named Graham. Graham is a 22-year-old musician, a member of the British pop group Sally Sally. The group recently signed the largest recording contract with EMI since the popular Duran Duran. It is a success story which may have never happened if not for Brother Godfrey. I bought a bass guitar because um, I just wanted to learn it a little bit and I got fed up with it. And um, it came to Christmas one, one year and uh, I couldn't decide what I wanted to get Graham and I didn't have any money. So uh, when he came down in the morning, uh, he found the bass guitar all wrapped up. And I said, you know, what's happening about my present? Because he always used to bring me a big box of presents, you know. And he sort of came down with a funny shaped object. And it was a bass guitar, you know. So um, he gave me a bass guitar for Christmas and said, learn it. And as he is my bigger brother, always dominating me, I, I thought I'd better do that. The main thing about the music which you write, it's very visual anyway, I mean the lyrics and the, the beat is it's quite visually orientated and Goffey has actually said that it is quite good to, to work out to, to get some aggression up to. Soccer in, in Brazil for instance, I mean during the game there's always like drum, drums and drum beats going on in the background and that, their soccer is very quick and it's beautiful and everything and uh, the speed of indoor, it seems that it's just a very fast pace. Godfrey and Graham Ingram. One makes his living with his feet, the other with his hands. They've obviously both got what it takes upstairs. To Leite for Godfrey Ingram. Now it's Leite shooting at its block. Helmut Dudek back out to Godfrey Ingram. Power play for the Spirit. They're within one. 38 seconds left in regulation time. Ingram looking. Godfrey shooting and he scores! He will tie it! Godfrey Ingram from way outside will tie the game at three. Power play goal for the Spirit. And John, you can take another look. Here is Ingram settling. Now watch the shot. It's a beauty. And it was through a screen, and you saw that Harris saw it too late because Ingram picks up his 12th goal of the season, his second in his many nights. Watch him bring it in. 